So here comes the fourth question. It goes like this. I was born in India, and there's a different conception of what a mind is in India, according to the yogis and practicing Buddhists. Do you have any thoughts on what other cultures think of what a mind is? It is true that, they're different, that different kinds of Buddhists think differently, but does that correlate with what we are learning? So the question here is, in, in essence, um, am I giving a culture-specific view um, of what a mind is? And how does it relate to, for example, the views of the mental um, that are implicit in the philosophies um, of Buddhists? So let me say, first of all, I most certainly am aspiring to a definition of the mind, a conceptualization of the mind that is universal. I'm certainly trying to get to something that is essential to the mind, to all minds. And the neuroscientific perspective um, that I'm bringing to bear, and remember I'm not bringing only a neuroscientific perspective to bear, but the neuroscientific perspective, as you will see as the course unfolds, is really a, a very valuable one, a very useful one in trying to, uh, trying to address these questions um, in, in solid scientific ways. Um, of course, at the anatomical and physiological level of investigation of the mental, we are talking about un universals. Human brains are the same everywhere. Um, in India, uh, uh, in, in, in England, in South Africa, where I live, in North America, in Australia, South America, uh, at the, human, the, the anatomy of the human brain is absolutely identical. So um, the cultural elements um, that um, the, the, the learner refers to, the participant refers to, um, are, are there. I mean, we all know that there are cultural differences uh, in aspects of our mental life. I'm trying to see past those and get to things which are absolutely fundamental and universal, which transcend those cultural differences. Now, this comes back to this recurring theme, uh, actually. The recurring theme being the distinction between affective functions, basic uh, primitive consciousness, the sort of elemental feeling state of the mind, which is, which is associated with brainstem and upper brainstem and limbic processes deep in the, in, in the human brain, as opposed to cortical processes which have to do with cognition, with thinking, with ways of representing things in different languages, in different cultures, etc. At that level, there are enormous vari va va variations from one culture to the next, one language to the next, and so on, ways in which we think about ourselves, ways in which we represent ourselves to ourselves and to each other, the vehicles of communication between one mind and, and another at those cognitive linguistic levels. There's enormous variability there. But when it comes to these deeper affective um, brainstem and limbic processes, there not only are there human universals, there are things that we share with all other mammals, which are remarkably similar in regard to those, those more basic uh, more, more fundamental properties of the mind. Uh, and we even share some of those with, uh, with non-mammals, you know, with other vertebrates. Interestingly, to come more specifically to the question about Buddhism, about which I must confess I do not know a great deal at all, but from what's been explained to me by, by Buddhists, uh, practitioners uh, uh, of, 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 of many uh, uh, related philosophies also, is the idea of trying to rid oneself of one's thoughts, trying to transcend this objectification of the self and the world, trying to get to some sort of pure mental state um, where the concept of a self, for example, is, uh, is uh, relinquished. I, I find those sorts of practices extremely interesting in relation to the very point that I'm making, that the mind is not cognition, the mind is not object representation. The mind is not memory. The mind is not thought. The mind is something deeper than that. And as you'll see as the course unfolds, I'm, I'm pointing us toward the brain stem and the limbic system and these universal um, anatomical and physiological uh, mechanisms which produce, uh, which are, which are the, the physical correlates of the, the fundamental essentials of a mind. Um, and these are the things that I, I don't think you lose 
um, uh, in, in, in those uh, uh, um, uh, altered states of consciousness that I'm referring to. It seems as if those practices aspire to um, a state of mind where one becomes that essential mental stuff uh, and sheds all of these uh, cognitive uh, um, um, additions or, or um, elaborations of the mind. I hope that I hope that that uh, goes some way towards um, uh, providing an answer to the fourth question. <laughs>